Hi, my name is John McGovern, and I wanted to show you a really um, quick and easy way to uh, perform a best practices bare installation of Splunk uh, using Ansible. So what I'm going to do here is um, go to my, my uh, Ansible project called Ansible Splunk Base, and I'm going to uh, git clone it to a new directory. That project has been cloned, so I'll change into the Ansible Splunk base directory. Now there's two uh, files that I need to edit, and let me open them up in a text editor here. Let's see, I need to edit uh, the host.sample file, and what I'm going to do is copy that file and paste it changing the name to just hosts instead of host.sample. This is where we'll set the name of the server or servers that we want to install Splunk on. So in my case, I have a EC2 instance uh, named demo01.splk.me, and I'll save that. Then we're gonna go into group vars, and we're gonna do the same thing with all.sample. We're gonna copy it and paste and rename that file to just all. These are our variables. Only a few variables here that we need to change. Um, we're going to leave the Ansible user defaulted as Ubuntu. Uh, our, our, our EC2 instances does, does not require the use of a uh, sudo password or a become password. So we'll leave both of these lines commented, and then I'm going to use the default certificate location. Let me zoom this in uh, for .ssh id underscore rsa. If you had your certificate in a different location, you can change that. Next, uh, this is going to be the username and password for your Splunk instance. So I'll set it to uh, Splunker123. Uh, we also support in this project the installation of Universal Forwarder. So there's Universal Forwarder connect, uh, credentials. All the other variables can be safely left as default. Down here, there is a Splunk uh, Enterprise Version Selector. And below this is a library of version strings. If you want to use a different version than the latest, you can copy that version string up to uh, here and uncomment it uncomment it otherwise it'll use the default cool so i have a project that will log into my instance using the ubuntu username using a ssh private key file and perform a base installation of splunk let's go back here so i will run ansible playbook i will reference my host file dash i hosts and then I'm going to run uh, two different playbooks here. I'm going to do osconfig.yml. Uh, what I like to do with this one here, I'll do yes, since this is my first time connecting to the uh, server to accept the key. Um, osconfig is a separate playbook that's broken out to perform kind of some basic configuration. I have it separated out so you don't have to use it if you already have a OS configuration management system that you're comfortable. But with a bare EC2 instance, it does some nice things like setting new limits, um, uh, turning off transparent huge pages, um, and doing kind of some basic housekeeping stuff, uh, configuring the host name of the system, and so on and so forth. So this, oh, and the other big thing here is that OS config will automatically uh, perform all system updates before Splunk gets installed. So there you can see it's going through, it's setting new limits for Splunk, creating the Splunk user. Um, you can configure this project to use a different user other than uh, Splunk if you would like to use, um, you know, some other username instead of Splunk to run the Splunk process. One of the, the big things about this, um, this installation is Splunk is not run as a root user, it's run as an unprivileged 
uh, regular user within the Linux environment. The longest piece of this installation right here is uh, for the Ubuntu updates or the Red Hat updates or the Scent updates to be applied. Uh, we support Ubuntu, uh, we test against Scent and also Red Hat uh, right now. And I'm, uh, you know, sometimes I work on expanding OS support. Okay. So once this is done, we're going to run another Ansible playbook. Ansible playbook I hosts, and we're going to run install.yaml. Install.yaml uh, is the playbook that actually um, does the Splunk installation, fairly self explanatory. It goes out and it downloads uh, Splunk from, uh, W gets it from the official Splunk download servers. Uh, does a checksum verification, uh, places it into the home Splunk directory, so the Splunk home user directory for safekeeping. And so what typically happens is that the download of Splunk itself and the uh, extraction of Splunk onto op Splunk take the longest. If you'd rather install Splunk in a different location, you can also change the Splunk home path right here. So it, it can be installed to a custom location. While this is installing, I should take the time to mention that all these steps are documented in the readme file of the playbook. So the uh, setup, including you know copying these variable uh, files and uh, changing defaults, and also the usage here, what we're doing uh, install.yaml is documented. We set up a few default settings, uh, disable some of the default uh, UI interruptions. This is useful for a bulk installation. By default, um, we install Splunk using systemd. There is a variable right here. If you'd like, you can install Splunk uh, using the old initd method, but we default to using systemd. Versions 7, 2, 2, and later are required for systemd installation. Okay, so that is it. Uh, if we go over here and we enter in our URL, Default port 8000. Splunk has been installed. And we have ourselves a base Splunk install. Um, so that's all there is to it. Once you've done the, the variable setup once, it's very simple just to change the, the host name and you know create a whole lab full of instances. Uh, a couple of um, notes here. I'm going to actually SSH into our instance. Let's get the username right. To actually perform um, actions as Splunk, make sure to uh, sudo to, as the Splunk user. Like I said, um, the Splunk installer files are downloaded in home Splunk. The default install location for Splunk itself is op Splunk. One of the nice things we do is uh, we set U limits by default as they should be. We also, um, if you look at user local bin, we disable transparent huge pages by default. We install a script that basically runs at boot time. Uh, System D runs it at boot time uh, to disable transparent huge, huge paces. We also symlink uh, the Splunk executable into op Splunk bin Splunk. So say we're sitting somewhere other than op Splunk bin and we want to view um, Splunk status, we can do that anywhere we are. So a lot of nice, um, just kind of best practice defaults here that are included so you don't have to do them every time in a quick and easy Splunk installation. This project is not intended to replace more complex installation methods. Um, for example, 
you know, there are uh, more complex Ansible playbooks for uh, clustered environments, um, you know, multi-server environments. Maybe someday we'll add more of those features. There are also ways to install Splunk using, you know, containers and Kubernetes that are also extremely, extremely quick. But the thing I like about this is each time we install Splunk, we're building a best practices Splunk installation from default, uh, from defaults in a very deterministic way. That's it. That's a quick and easy way to install Splunk. Again, uh, just GitHub slash John McGovern slash Ansible Splunk base. Thank you.